Okay, right, we're just going to have a look at wake on LAN, so wall. Uh, it's also, you'll see it as echo in terms of what we see in Wireshark a little bit later on. Um, if I had a look for some traffic that, uh, that might be applicable, I could find some wall traffic in here from a previous trace. And I could see that that's a packet containing all Fs to sync the stream. So that's six lots of FF followed by 16 that's 16 times the MAC address so we've got the MAC address 16 times in the payload so that's a payload of a UDP packet and the UDP packet is, is sent to port 40,000 and we can see the IP address that's used here is to the if you look at the destination address uh, for IP we can see it down here oops there he is is 255 so that's the broadcast address if we look at the mac address and um, we can see that's actually gone out on all ones so the destination address is a broadcast on this lan okay right so that's to to a particular target in terms of a mac address um, even though we identified the ip address we can see in here yeah that what we're looking for is the mac address for to wake up you know to get it up and running so the source address is laptop no no mention of the destination ip address in the wall packet okay so let's see how we generate that um let, first things first let's have a target i've got a target here which is a laptop which is the address 192.168.1.231 i'm going to put him to sleep i'm going to prove that he's asleep by trying to ping to that laptop And we should see that we're unsuccessful. In fact, if we go back to VNC, I can't change anything. It's asleep. Right, good. Okay, let's close those down. So, um, what have we got at the moment? We've got Wireshark running. It's at the bottom of a sequence here. Let's restart that sequence. So it's a bit neater for us. We can find our own packets then. And I'm going to bring up a couple of tools. So I'm going to be using these three tools. In the happy mix so starting with the one on the right that came in last we can see that this tool is copyrighted by brand slack Deficitous, and this is a very simple tool which doesn't seem to match to screen size very well well we put the mac address in the ip address of the target the subnet mask that it belongs to then we've got a choice of two options we can either go for local subnet so if I if I send that wake me up, you'll see that it goes out to the local subnet. Well, there's no packet. There's actually no packet out there, and it certainly doesn't uh, doesn't wake me up. So okay, that's that's didn't work. I don't think. Let's just check the ping, and we can see the destination host is unreachable. So I'm using port number um, seven. There's a UDP port number, and we'll see that in the packet. We haven't seen one yet. So I'm looking at the internet now as an option. So this changes, it seems to form a correct packet because as soon as I do that, I can see that I've got an echo request going out to line. So let's stop the trace. I can see this echo request going out and I can see a gratuitous ARP following that. So that's actually coming out from 231. So if I look at my ARP cache now, I can now actually target that particular laptop. So that's all done and done. If we look at the echo, the echo starts off with all Fs and it's the repeating MAC address. So we can see that down here in the hex decode for that packet. So on port number seven. So the destination here is all Fs. So it's a broadcast locally and it's a broadcast in an IP subnet. So that works. That actually brings the other party into play and we can now start playing with them. And the first thing, of course, we can do it pull them back to sleep. Okay, so let's restart um, Wireshark. And we'll use the second tool uh, in the set. So we can use, well, we'll use the Solar Winds one. So we can see that that's uh, Solar Winds. Find the about. There he is. Okay, so we can see here again, we've got the same IP address, same MAC address. So you're going to need to know those, of course. And we're going to send out. So, so there's 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 very little to do here you know, here's the settings fields 
to network settings, retries per packet, and so on. Yeah. Also calculate the broadcast address and auto monitor. You can have that on or off. So we'll leave those as set previously and fire away. There we go. We can see two echo requests that went out. And hopefully that's brought the thing alive. In fact, I'll, I'll send some pings now. Yep, indeed, there they go. Okay, so he's up. He's up. He should be up and running. So again, we get the same sort of look and feel here. And a little bit later on, we should find our gratuitous art. First things first, let's look at, our, look at our echo packet. And we can see that it's going out to a broadcast address. It's going out to a broadcast on that subnet. And it's using port number seven. Saw that before, of course. And the payload, as before, all Fs and then repeating 16 times the MAC address. So we're looking for 231 to send out its gratuitous ARP. There it is. And then immediately after that, we'll send out some pings. You know, that's it doing it automatically. And I can see those are from SolarWinds because the payload down here, look, actually says that it's SolarWinds. Dot net. Okay, otherwise, this would be a standard pings. And what you can see following that, of course, is as we come down through is a ping request which has got a reply so if we have a look at that that's solarwinds.net and we can see that reply we can see another ping and another reply so again t tasking those all associating those in the normal way and that's of course because the original pings didn't work because even though the echo was received of course it has to fire up so that in that intermediary time we have to wait and then what we should see is we should start to see some more stuff taking place a little bit later on. Let's go towards the end of the trace. And what we should start to see is our own. I'm going to put some more our own in to make it happen. That's of course. Oh, well, wasn't quick enough. So therefore, the laptop has gone back to sleep again. So let's wake him up again. So we're using solar winds to keep keep to the same thing. In fact, he hasn't registered that he's come up here. So we'll we'll wake him up. Let's prove that he woke up this time. There we go. He powered up in seven seconds. So he's happy. We're happy. Everybody's happy. Good. And that's using solar wind. So let's put him back to sleep. Okay. Move him out of the way. You've done your work, my friend. So I'm just going to remove you from the screen and bring up the last of the three options. We're going to restart Wireshark, of course. And what you can see here is I'm using Wake Me On LAN. Now, wait me online. The first thing that you need to do is you need to add a computer. So I've done this previously. So I just put a 192.168.1.231. I put the computer name in there. I put Lenovo. I put the um, user text in, which is just wall testing or something of that ilk. Testing wall. Um, and then I put the MAC address. Now, the format that I put the MAC address in is with this format. And as you can see, I've already entered that, but you might find that you want to change that format, in which case you can do that here. Another thing that you um, might want to change is in terms of the options. So this is the change, wake me up, selected options is the port number that's used. Now I'm going to use the default settings for this, for this first run. Let's just make sure we're still, let's see, are we still asleep? Yes, looks like it. Nothing happening there. So I'm going to right click. And then I'm going to wake up the set of your computer, which you can also do with the F8, of course. So let's have a look, see what we got. We got a wall. There was a wall and a wall packet. The fundamental difference is that it starts, so it's still broadcast. It's broadcast on the local LAN and it's going out with port number 40,000. So we can see here, this is the stain packet as we've seen previously starting all f's and then 16 times we see the mac address okay are we awake yes we are okay and now let's put him back to sleep 
And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to modify those settings so it's compatible with the other apps which are all using port number seven. We're going to send the same wake up. Well, ah, wake up. Let's go and have a look on Wireshark, see what we've got. So we've got a wall there. Let's search for walls. So no wall. Hmm, okay. What about echoes? Ah, we got an echo the second time, and that's because the port number has changed from 40,000 to 7. But the payload thereafter is the same. So as a result, what we should see, mark the packet with Control M, clear the trace, and we can see that from that point on, from that packet that I've just marked, you can see coming down through is pretty much the same as we would have seen before. So we should find a gratuitous hop somewhere in here. There it is. And we're up and running, he says, hopefully. Yes, we are. It works equally well if you hibernate. It works equally well if you shut down. But of course, the difference between the shutting down is just the sheer amount of time that it takes to come back up again. So you just have to be patient under those circumstances. So that was three tools that we used for the purposes of doing the same sort of job. And the simplest of those is probably solar winds. The more complicated is Wake Me On LAN, but Wake Me On LAN gives you the capability of, of, of bringing in, so you can you can actually start saving this as a file and opening it up and so on and so forth. So it's, it's a little bit, you can scan for computers, you can do all sorts of things. So it's a little bit more uh, involved you know, compared to the other two tools. So there's more options, of course. But if you want the simplicity of, if you know the MAC address, if you know the IP address, SolarWinds um, Wake on LAN seems to do the job perfectly well. Anyway, that's enough for this example of testing. We shall take that forward on the wireless side a little bit later on. That's all on fixed LAN cables, Ethernet cables so far.